and we were talking a little bit off air, that all liberals use the Bible. So, and they use it as a, their proof text, but then we also discussed that they're actually cherry picking. What do we mean by that? Well, it's exactly the concept that you can pick up the Word of God and then look at the things you like and live, try and live by those and throw everything else away. That's cherry picking. Like, for example, mm -hmm. um, a lot of times when you're discussing the Bible with people who believe from the liberal perspective, they'll say, well, God is love. God is love. So how can you say these things? They're so negative um, because the Bible teaches us, well, they're cherry picking what love really mm -hmm. is. If you go to the Bible, and you could encourage them to go to the Bible, because the Bible is sharper than any two-edged sword, and it is alive, and the more they read it, the better. But you can encourage them to go to the Bible and say, well, okay, here's love where, you know, here's where God is talking about love here, and he's judging people. He's going to send them to a place where he doesn't want to send them, but they've chosen to go, hell. So if God is love, why has he made this decision? And so you see, it's the whole of the scriptures. It's not just a piece or pieces of the scripture. And that's where they get into trouble. Yeah, that's exactly it. You know, your dad really inspired me to realize and to, to search out the idea that we take all the what the scripture says on the topic, not just one or two passages exactly. that, that we might be able to agree with or we can use to forward our own particular agendas. Uh, something else they do, Jill, as you know, for example, Rob Bell, whenever he's confronted about his, his view of gay marriage and, and homosexuality and Christianity, he says, well, there's not that many passages. And besides, Jesus never talked about it. So they, they try to discount the volume of scripture that speaks to something as if that's not important as right. well. So there's a couple of ways they come about it, but that's one of the ways. And Jesus did speak about it. He actually did speak about homosexuality because he pointed to what marriage really is. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's, that's right. A man will leave his mother and father and cling to his wife and the two shall become one. There is no double male in that, in that verse. There is no double female. It is male and female. So Jesus did speak to it. Okay, I had said in the last segment that I wanted to explore a little bit how this happened, and even when it happened, but, but right now, how did it happen? And there's a breakdown, obviously, in our seminaries. There's a breakdown in some of the denominations and some of the churches. Eric, you referred to the German Enlightenment, but let's bring it up more into modern times than going all the way back there. All of us know that we all get the inquiries about, you know, where can I send my kid to college, Christian college, seminary? Bible school, which one? All three of us have problems because there aren't that many that are sound remaining. There obviously there certainly are some, but they're fewer and fewer. So where did the breakdown begin? Did it begin in the seminaries? Well, it, it appears that that's the way it was 150 or so years ago. Mm -hmm. We see the same thing, kind of a remake, a second tidal wave coming the same directions as it was back then. First, we see the seminaries and the intellectuals begin to waffle on whether the scriptures are really true or not, and which passages in the Bible or even books shouldn't even be in there. This is the kind of thing that's, that's out there. And from there, these young people have a decision. Either they're going to believe that the scriptures is true and hang on to the truth, or they're going to believe their seminary professor who they're paying money to listen to. Some of them then are going to be in church ministry, either as elders, deacons, leaders, pastors, missionaries. And if they don't believe the scripture, they're going to forward those same ideas. And eventually some of them will also become denominational leaders. So the denominations slowly but surely go mm -hmm. sideways. But it starts, and this has been a pattern, it starts in the seminaries. Now look, I am not against seminaries or Christian education. I'm a proponent of it. But I warn people, even in a, a Bible college that got a great review 10 years ago, theological review I'm talking about, keep your eyes open and your ears open and above all your Bible open when you go there and listen carefully what's being said. That doesn't mean you become a nitpicker and you're negative on everything. But today, so many of these ideas get forwarded and it happens over and over till it becomes just the common thread of thinking within a classroom or even an entire seminary or Bible college. And as you and I know, Ken Ham has pointed this out and he's taken some great hits for it, for pointing out the problems in the seminaries as well. But he 
did a great job of evaluating this, and I, I don't think we can throw the research away that he and others have done about this. I've done some, and it, it's shocking that places I never dreamed I'd say a negative yes, word about mm-hmm. are True. now I'm warning about today. Mm-hmm. And yeah. this poison of false doctrine or picking and choosing things out of the Bible, this has been with us for 2,000 years. If you trace mm-hmm. the history of the church, you see it all the time. The church is constantly battling against this. But there's a really big difference now, and it started in the 20th century, and that is media communication. Mm -hmm. Now this microphone has grown and grown. It's spreading out everywhere. We have the internet, we have all the television things. This is something that has changed the rules of the game because all of a sudden you have a world listening to this. Before you just had small pockets of people. Now you have the world and that I think has led to this huge resurgence and acceptance of liberal theology, of 